Hey, everybody, welcome back. This is week three of six of our live training. I am your host, Marty Orofice, and I'm going to show you how I help my son, who is diagnosed with autism, heal and reach his full potential using nutrition and supplementation. I say this every week, but I want you to know full potential is different for everyone. So just keep that in mind. It's not saying that everyone's gonna have the same exact result. Now my goal for this training is the how, giving you all the information, strategies, tactics to implement the nutrition and supplementation plan. Now if you missed last week where we went over the two hour protocol, make sure you watch. It's in the members area. You can just log in, create your account. For everyone that's on, how many people, by a show of hands, how many people have already logged into the members area? All right, good. Just making sure, checking on you. But today, this week is going to be a little bit different. It's specifically how do we implement that two-hour protocol that we discussed last week. And over the past few weeks, we've covered a ton of ground, but now it's time to get extremely practical. And guys, I am looking for testimonials, wins, success stories. So if you implement what I tell you and you see a difference, I wanna know about it. You guys are getting emails from me, you can just hit reply, post it in the Facebook group, whatever way you can send it, just let me know. And I'm not a doctor. I don't pretend to be one. I'm just a father that's done a ton of research, had a really good result, and everything here that I tell you is my opinion. So do your own research, talk to your own doctors, and all that legal stuff. All right. So we are in week three, and as always, this call will be recorded and placed into our members area. If you haven't logged in, make sure you do. This is where we're going to be putting not only the video, we're also going to be putting the audio. So if you want to listen as you're out taking the dog for a walk or driving in your car or whatever else, you can do that as well. As well, tonight we're gonna to be talking about a lot of products and we're gonna have links to the products. Uh, we're gonna be going over recipes. We're gonna have some of those in the members area as well. That said, make being on live a priority. I don't know, for some reason, we learn better when we're on live. We pay attention more. And in my opinion, our kids are worth it. So let's do that. And you never know, there might be just one little thing that you pick up that makes a big difference. So go to a quiet place, shut down Facebook, all your other browsers, get a notebook, put the phone away and just commit. Go all in for one hour and let's do this thing. So each week builds on the week before. So it's really imperative that you watch and understand the concepts being discussed. We're gonna go over a little bit of what we discussed last week just to continue to familiarize ourselves. But what I want you to do, we do have a question, where is the members area? we will be sending out an email. You should have gotten a few emails that has a link to the members area. So if you didn't, I will make sure specifically that I get you a link where you can register for that. All right, so yeah, you may have not gotten it, it's all right. So as you get questions, feel free to put them in here. You can post them to the whole group or you can switch it and change it and send it just to me. Um, as we're going through things, you're gonna have these things pop up and go, oh, you know, I wonder about that. It's better just to put it in now and then I'll cover them all at the end. And I want you to know that the idea here isn't to be perfect. Perfection is impossible. We're here to do our best and make the best choices we can for our children. And once we understand that the choices we do make have make a huge difference, it's much easier to make those better choices. And trust me, I'm human, I make mistakes, I just know I go to bed, I feel really good knowing that I did everything that I could to help my son, and I just want you guys to have that same feeling. So last week, things got spicy. We learned quite a bit about the underlying dysfunction in autism. So let's do a quick recap of what we learned, because it was a lot. First, we learned about the microbiome, which is the engine that drives our children's body and brain to either healing or total dysfunction. We learned about the intestinal wall and leaky gut, which we talked about was like that cheesecloth that lets the good stuff in and keeps the bad stuff out. We learned about chronic inflammation 
and how the brain can't fully develop if all the body's energy is being used to fight off those perceived threats of food or other toxins that we're consuming into our body. And we learned that changing the gut and inflammation fundamentally changes the brain and can improve symptoms of autism. And we learned about my 2R protocol and what we need to do in order to heal the gut and reduce inflammation. So tonight's gonna to get very practical in how we implement that 2R protocol. That said, let's quickly review that 2R protocol. First thing is remove and repair. So the first things we need to remove are the things, the chemicals and the food that cause the biggest issues in our children. So now we're, next week we're gonna be getting into a few more of the chemical-based toxins that are in common household items that literally kill our children's brain cells, disrupt hormones, cause major issues and things like that. But that we are gonna focus on next week. This week, we're just gonna review and talk about the things that we're consuming and put into our body. Now, we talked about wheat and why we need to get rid of that and everything that contains gluten. We talked about reducing our sugar intake. And as I said, it's almost impossible to remove sugar completely because it's in almost everything we consume or that's made in a factory, but we're gonna reduce it as much as possible and take out things that are just direct sugar inputs, things like cotton candy or soda, things like that. We're gonna be removing dairy and reducing our intake of other poisons and pesticides. Now it's almost impossible to remove pesticides because the pesticides that we spray on our crops, they're water soluble. And what that means is they just go into the groundwater and they're in the water we drink. They're in the rainwater. Um, the craziest thing, it's even in our breast milk that we're, you know, we're giving to our kids. Just Google that. It'll absolutely blow your mind. Trust me, it did. And I, I can't even lactate. So, I mean, if, if it blew my mind, I'm sure it'll blow yours. All right. So that was remove. Now we have repair. So how do we do that? The first part is about changing the food that our children eat. Now, I realize I have the word diet in here, but just know that at the most fundamental level, we aren't implementing a diet, not at all. We're implementing a new way to see food. We're implementing a lifestyle change that will impact the rest of our child's life. This is not a diet. This is not a 30-day or five-day juice fast, and then we go back. All right, now I get the question quite a bit. Is this just the gluten-free, casein-free diet? Which is extremely popular, especially in the autism community. And the answer is absolutely not. While we do avoid gluten and we avoid casein, this is completely different. We are eating with the primary goal of fixing the gut and reducing inflammation in our children's brains. Now, most gluten-free substitutes are just as bad or worse than the original. And I've had a lot of people say, hey, I've tried, I've tried the gluten casein free thing. I had trouble with it, it didn't work. I totally get that. There's not a lot of good information out there. Doctors don't tell you, no one else really understands it. And when you simply replace one food that causes inflammation with another, you're not gonna see the results. Junk food is junk food. Just because you got gluten free pretzels doesn't mean they're good for you. Many times they can be even worse. And to illustrate the point, what I want to do is I want to take a look at two different bread choices, one with gluten and one without. Okay, so this one is Ezekiel bread. This is in every single grocery store in the freezer section, and this is not gluten-free. And now a little bit later, we're going to get into a little bit more details on how to read labels and how to shop a little bit smarter. But for now, just know that when it comes to ingredients, there's two ground rules that I want you to know and internalize. Number one, the less ingredients, the better. If you see the big laundry list of, you know, the things you can't even pronounce, not good. And the other one is just that. Can you pronounce the ingredients? If you can pronounce the ingredients and it's a short list, probably better for you than the alternative. All right, so here we have this wonderful, non-gluten-free bread. And I actually do have this on occasion. And it has organic sprouted wheat, water, sprouted barley, millet, lentils, soybeans, spelt, yeast, 
gluten and sea salt, all things that I can pronounce and that are, you know, they may not be the best for you, but they're better than the alternative. So now let's take the most popular, I'm not sure if it's like actually the most popular, but it's the most popular one that I've seen, which is Udi's, gluten-free bread. They have bread, rolls, everything else. And right next to it, I have the ingredient list. And I don't even want to get started because my tongue will just get twisted and be all crazy. I mean, look at this. I don't even know. It's tapioca starch, resistant corn starch, brown rice flour, canola oil, potato, tapioca, calcium lactate, calcium carbonate, xanthium. I mean, this, the list goes on and on. Um, mono calcium phosphate. This is not something that we should be putting in the body of our sensitive children. So just know that if it says gluten-free, doesn't mean it's healthy, okay? All right, so saying that, what are we gonna be eating? And our eating plan is a little bit more similar to upgraded paleo. And paleo is just, it's where we eat anything that we could hunt or gather back in the day. Things like high quality meats, fishes, nuts, leafy greens, vegetables, seeds, things like that. And removing most of the items that are made in a factory, pasta, cereal, candy. And that's the general guideline. And if you're ever looking up recipes and things like that, search for recipes that are paleo. Um, and the next thing is to eat organic. We talked about it last week. We wanna get rid of the poisons and pesticides that we're putting in our children's bodies. It's imperative that you eat organic as much as possible. We're gonna be completely inundated with pesticide in our drinking water, in the air, in almost every food we eat, even if it is organic. So it's crucial that we're not just consuming that directly. Um, also need to stay away from processed foods where the toxic chemicals and pesticides are hidden. So when you look at a grocery store, what I want you to do is just like, stay on the outsides for the most part. And that's where you can buy the real food, meats, fruits, vegetables, things like that. Um, when we're eating like this, we realize that healthy fats are necessary for brain health. And that whole low fat craze in the 80s has only done two things to us. It's made us fatter and made us sicker than ever before. I mean, it's just insane. We need to add fat back into our diet, things like grass-fed butter. That's right, butter coconut oil and coconut, avocado, whole eggs, things like that, things that are high fat. Now, if you take a look here on this, uh, this food pyramid, there's veggies, there's meats, there, you know, all that type of stuff. All right, so that's the overview there. Now let's take a look at the supplements. And this is just listing off all the things that I said. And the other important thing is eating whole eggs. There was this whole craze for a while, like eating egg whites. It's just ridiculous. The, the yolk is the best part and has the most nutrients for, for our kids' bodies and their brains. So don't get scared off by the whole um, misconception and misinformation that the dietary fat that we consume will somehow, you know, be extremely unhealthy and cause high blood pressure. If you're eating low quality fat, trans fats, things like that. Totally agree. But when you're eating high quality fat, stuff is awesome. All right, so let's take a look at these supplements. And in the repair part of the 2R protocol, we add in supplements to help our children restore that optimal gut health and also reduce inflammation. So the first thing that we do, we start out with probiotics and those help rebalance the gut. So we're adding in beneficial strains so that the push-pull of the good bacteria and the bad bacteria, we're adding in more good guys so it can stay balanced. And right here, I just have the, the icon of the particular brands that I use right now. And we're gonna have links to all these in the members area. So you, know, you don't have to uh, you know, frantically scribble down what the names are and take pictures of the screen and things like that. Cause we're gonna have all these listed out and where you can buy them. So the next thing we do is we add in digestive enzymes. And those help, help the gut break down the food so the children can actually get the nutrients that they need and reduce inflammation. Then the next supplement is called Restore. 
And what this does is I know we talked about the leaky gut and the tight junctions. What this does is it helps bring them back together and heal that and also protects our system from uh, pesticides and also creates a healthy gut balance with the bacteria in our gut. And the last thing on this particular one is called endersol gel or entersol gel. And what this does is it binds to toxins and pathogens in the gut. So when you're first starting out, I would recommend adding this to your daily protocol. What it does is it gets the bad guys out and helps keep things in balance. You know, as you get a little bit further along and you're, you know, the child's gut is healed, you know, you're not going to have as many pathogens. I know people that have worms and all sorts of crazy dysfunction. And this goes in there and just binds to all of that and helps you get it out. So important, especially in the beginning, but it's not something that you would need to do, you know, every day, forever type thing. All right. So those are supplements for the gut. And now we're going to do supplements to help overall. The first one is a multivitamin. Now, majority of multivitamins that you buy are just absolute crap. Um, what we're looking for is getting, you know, high quality ingredients, low toxins, make sure they're tested. And the multivitamin that I recommend is called Potential. And it's actually the first nutritional supplement ever to receive a patent to improve learning, academic, and behavior functioning. And it is the craziest thing. If you look on their website, they have all these studies and news stories and everything else where they'll go in and start giving the kids these vitamins in the morning. And it'll take schools that are, you know, last in a district and, and boost them to first in the district. Or, and districts that are the lowest and put them first in the state. So there's been, this has been around for a while and it is just tremendous on what it can do. So as we heal the gut, the body can start absorbing more too. So we need to give the child's body what it needs. So these are a great, great way to start. Next, we add in omega-3 fats. Normally you'd say that and you know, you hear fish oil and things like that and stuff to take down. This one is the one that I use, it's called Barleen's and it tastes exactly like lemonade, which I mean, I love the taste of it and so does my son, so it's good. And what that does is it helps reduce inflammation and help the brain work better. Now, one of the supplements that we didn't talk about last week and I was gonna talk about it next week, but I. I need to give you guys the information now because it's one of the, in my opinion, one of the most important ones is called sulforaphane, which is just a fancy word for broccoli sprout extracts. Now, this helps the body in a number of ways, but just know that in preliminary studies, it has been shown to improve symptoms of autism dramatically. Not just like, hey, there's like 10% that saw a minor benefit. This was like, major differences in the majority of kids that were taking it. I know that there's some large scale uh, clinical trials going on right now. Um, there's no need to wait. This stuff is really helpful and you should get on it. We'll also have a link to that. There's different types and you know, it's, it's important to get the right one that the body, you know, your child's body can use. And the last one is called uh, Organifi Green Juice. And this has 12 superfood ingredients that help with a whole range of functions and it's just a, a great way to get healthy greens into the system help with immunity and things like that all right so how many of you guys have heard of the 80 20 rule all right well it states that 80 percent of our results come from 20 percent of our actions and 80 percent of our actions only yield 20 percent of results so our goal here you know with and really anything but especially with this is to identify the 20% of our actions and things that we can do that'll create the biggest benefit for our kids. And that's what I always want, to, want you guys to ask. What are the things that are gonna have the biggest impact? So then you can implement those and you know, create a base. And then you can move on to the next thing and then continue to ratchet up what you're, what you're doing. And the way I look at that is if you only have to focus on the 20% that'll give you 80% of the results, it reduces overwhelm and allows you to start implementing right away. All right, now what I found is that it's much easier when you're doing any type of behavior change to add in first 
other than subtract. So my suggestion is go out this week, that's gonna be your homework, and purchase the products that you can start to give your children if you haven't already. Obviously, you know, consult a doctor, or whoever else you need to, but adding first is, is where to start. And then after that, it's removing the, the poison from the system. Okay, so let's take a look at a typical day and establish some concepts. Um, I create what I call bookends on my son's day. I do it for my day as well. And what that is, is I establish a morning routine and then a dinner and bedtime routine, which goes a long way to establish order and also expectation. And the bookends take the guesswork out of a good portion of the day. So the morning consists of all the normal things like getting ready, brushing teeth, getting dressed. And then there's also a food and supplement routine. And at night we've established the same bookends which is, you know, PJs, brushing teeth, story time, prayer bed. Now at night, we don't do supplements, so we, we keep those mainly for the morning. Now, of course, you're going to have days that vary, and that's totally fine. I just find that the most in fact, important factor in any type of behavior modification is to establish new routines and habits that you can control. In the morning, you control that time. Midday, things happening, people are calling, you know, it's hard to control. But you can control the morning and you can control right before you go to bed. All right, so in the morning, with this morning routine, with the supplements, after my son gets ready, he comes up to me and he says, Daddy, can I have my vitamins and my green juice in my lemonade? Because he loves it. And I said, of course. So what I do is I have the three on the top, which is the probiotics, the digestive enzymes and the multivitamin, those are all chewable um, tablets. So what I do is I give them, them, or give them to him, and then the, the other two that are a little bit separated, the Restore and the fish oil, those are liquid. So just give them to him separate, which is, it's five milliliters. You, you know, once you get the Restore, you can see it on the package. Just, I just do like a little, uh, one of the things that you measure out, like uh, medicine, put it in there. And then the fish oil is just a teaspoon, so that's really easy. So then on the bottom, which is the greens. So I use his green juice as a vitamin delivery system, which does a really good job of masking the flavor. And I add in broccoli sprout extract and the green supplements. I haven't been using, like I said, the anthracel gel because I haven't needed it. And I, I know there are probably some of you guys out there just going, yeah, right. I can't get my kid to touch anything green. I totally get it. And we're going to go into some other, other ways to get started because there is a change in palate. So as you start to change diet, the palate changes and things that they used to like just completely not even touch, they may start to enjoy again. All right, and like I said, the, the green supplements called Organifi. I found that there are other like better ingredient profile um, supplements out there for greens. Like me personally, I take one called Green Vibrance. I recommend Organifi, I've tried a bunch, and this one just tastes way better. And obviously with our kids, it, I mean, it's a wonderful product, but it has 12 ingredients. The one that I take has like, I don't know, 200 or something like that. So it tastes good. Okay, so let's talk about the, the green juice and smoothies for a second. There's a couple different ways you can do it. If you're really industrious and you have a juicer, you can go to the store and buy the organic vegetables and do that. That's probably, you know, the ideal way or you can put them in a blender. Um, I just find that for me, I have a hard time sticking with that just because it's so time consuming. So what I do is I found a store-bought variety that I think is fairly decent. And there's a few keys to it, but I know you can find them at any store. I find ones at Trader Joe's and Aldi, and the one in Aldi is like half the price. But the key to this is you wanna find one that's cold pressed, number one. Two, you want it to be greens heavy and not fruit heavy. A lot of the ones that you see at the store, it's just, if you read the back of it, it's just apple juice concentrate, orange juice concentrate, and you taste it and you're like, this is wonderful. It's just because it's in, it probably has more sugar than a can of Coke. So those are two 
big things. And then the next one is that it hasn't been pasteurized. Pasteurization is a process where they, you know, bring whatever the product is to really high heat to kill off all the bacteria and things like that. The problem when they do that is they kill off all the good stuff. So the ones here, you can see there, these are a high pressure process. They bring in, they have this new way to process it where it keeps a lot of those nutrients and things like that in place. And you can see here on this one, they've got 17 cow leaves, one pound of spinach, one large apple, cucumber, celery, lemon, and ginger. So it is a very greens heavy juice and it tastes pretty good actually. Now, if you're saying to yourself and you try this and you're, you know, your kid throws it against the wall and won't have anything to do with it, there's another way to do that. And that's to make a smoothie, a protein shake. And I have a product here. It's a uh, product that I get on Amazon. It's a naked whey protein powder. But the recommendation here is to start with more of a fruit smoothie. And then over time, you can start lowering the amount of fruit that you have in it. So what that does is when they first taste it, it's like, yeah, this is really good. It's got a lot of sugar. And you still have the greens and things like that and the protein in it. But they'll like the taste. And over time, you can slowly just start you know, removing sugar and that will just, you know, their taste buds will adjust slowly. Um, the reason why we don't want to have all the sugar, as we talked about last week, is that fructose and sugar, it causes inflammation and it limits our ability to think. So we want to, you know, try to limit that as much as possible. But that said, great starting point, go fruit heavy and back it down. Now, in terms of the type of protein, I suggest using a grass fed whey and you can get it right on Amazon, like I said. We'll also put a link in the members area. Now, the one pictured here is vanilla flavor, and it does have a little bit of coconut sugar. And I lean towards this one anyway. They have one that has only one ingredient, and that is the whey. And the reason why is because when I make my two-hour pancakes with the vanilla kind, it does taste significantly better. And compared to everything else that's in it, it's a coconut sugar, and it's a very small amount. And like I said, we're not looking here for perfection. So if you can get something that your kid will eat that you know is good for you, awesome. Now, please note that like anytime you go to the grocery store or anything else and you see a protein powder, most of the time, those are absolute crap. They're filled with artificial ingredients. They're processed at high temperatures, which same thing here is going to remove a lot of the amino acid profiles and reduce what you actually get from it. So why is that even important? Well, we talked about last week, we have this antioxidant, this master antioxidant in our body called glutathione. And when you eat a high quality whey protein, it increases your body's glutathione, which our kids have a problem with. Now, if you remember about it, this is like that little Roomba vacuum and it's just moving around inside your cells, cleaning up those free radicals and things like that. And you know, all of the different types of studies and things show that kids on the spectrum have lower levels of glutathione, which means they can't um, deal with toxic environments as well as neurotypical. So what do we need to do? We need to help them produce more. And this is a great way to do it. Now, it may take some experimentation with this to get the taste and texture right, but trust me, it's worth it. Because then you can use these shakes to deliver supplements and give much needed nutrition. And you can try out, I mean, there's like a million different varieties of the types of shakes you can do. You can do banana and almond butter and like a little bit of uh, vanilla extract and make it more of like a vanilla milkshake, or you can do it with fruit and berries. There's literally unlimited combinations you could try. Or you can go the hardcore route and just dump an entire bag of spinach in like I do, and then just put a few different berries, which I did the other night and watching the movie, I was like, do you want a dessert smoothie? He's like, oh yeah. I was like, okay, cool. I did that, put some berries, and he, he chugged like a glass and a half of like spinach juice. I was like, crazy. And just one little tip, if you're doing any type of greens in the blender and you're, and you're blending it up in a smoothie, if you add in avocado, it makes it like really smooth and a creamy texture. Really important because I know our kids definitely have trouble with some textures. Okay, so that's on the smoothie and the shakes. So the rest of the day, 
it's pretty simple, right? So in the afternoon before meals and in the evening before meals, it's five milliliters of restore and then digestive enzymes. Now, if you're on, you know, you're in the beginning phases and you have the endocell gel, cool, you add that in and that's really has, it's tasteless and everything. So you can mix that into water or any type of drink or just, you know, it's like a little gel, put on a spoon and just take it down. Like I said, bookends are important, especially when our kids are in school and they're in places that we can't control. So like I said, it's as best we can, it's not perfection. So if you have the bookend and you're doing it in the morning and you're doing it at night, it's okay not to do it. In an ideal world, you would do it three times throughout the day. All right, so last week we looked at the three different types of breakfast. The typical, which I updated a little bit, orange juice, toast, frosted flakes, milk, pop tarts, and then there's the healthy breakfast that we've been told over the years is really healthy, heart healthy. Oatmeal, whole grain bagel, bowl of fruit, Cheerios, skim milk. The reality is though, that's just a glyphosate cocktail, causes inflammation, feeds bad gut bacteria, causes leaky gut, and causes our kids to crash just a few hours later, feeling sad and hungry for more. And we talked about the our two breakfast, which is things that feed good, feed the brain, feed the good gut bacteria, and leaves your child with energy that lasts until lunch. And those are things like eggs, avocado, uncured bacon, the R2 pancakes, which the recipe will be in the members area. I'm actually gonna do a little bit of a cooking show with that over the next few days, one of the days, and uh, so you can, you can watch me cook if you'd like to do that. And also, um, I have a recipe for breakfast muffins that we use quite a bit. So, so that's what a breakfast would look like. And now let's take a look at the other two meals, lunch and dinner. So I have the, the plate on there. As you can see, there's the two biggest areas is vegetables and protein. And then, and then it says nuts, it's really fat. So it's vegetables, protein, fat, and then a small amount of fruit. So that goes right along with everything that I have here, which is it's you have the meat, you have the vegetable. I always use avocado, my son loves it, so I just use that for the fat, but you can use other types of nuts, and then a little bit of fruit. Do you notice any sandwiches there? No, this is a very simple way of eating, and how I do it, it's like extremely simple. I just have a number of different recipes and number of different foods that I use for both breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then I just rotate because I don't know if you could tell by looking at me, but I am not a chef by any stretch of the imagination. So if I can do this, trust me, you can trust me. And what I serve on that rotation will be determined by what I have in the fridge. And, you know, if I ask him what he wants, it'll be that. We are also putting a number of the recipes, like I said earlier, in the members area, so check that out. All right, so that's the, the plate. Now, time for some tough love, guys. You guys having trouble with certain foods? Don't buy them anymore. You're 100% in control of what goes into your child's mouth when they're home, 100%. Oh, but they run into the cupboard and grab stuff. Well, if you have stuff in there that they shouldn't be eating, shame on you for buying it. Unless they're doing the shopping and paying for groceries, in that case, you know, it's more of an education. Hey, watch this documentary. There's tons of documentaries now on Netflix and things like that, or if they're that age, you know, in their twenties and they're out shopping, whatever it is, like that's an education thing. But if they're young, you're in control. So if my son questions why he can't have something, I just tell him, look, it's not good for you. And that what we eat, we want things that make us feel good and help get our body strong. And he gets it. I said, do you want to feel good? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, then this will, this will help us feel good. All right. So let's dive into a few methods for dealing with dietary changes. First one is substitution. I find this to be an extremely helpful starting point 
especially when the diet is all things like refined sugar, carbohydrates, and dairy. You simply take the food that they're already eating and replace it with a better option. That's the same thing that you transitioned out of. For example, if your kid likes Kraft macaroni and cheese, who what kid doesn't, buy something like the, organ, the Annie's organic gluten-free vegan formula. Like I said a little bit earlier, this is not health food just because it says organic and gluten-free on it. That said, it is a tremendous transition food. Now, they may not like it as much. They may refuse it altogether. That's okay because you're still offering the food that they want it. And it's their choice or not whether they choose to eat it. Another great example is pizza. Instead of getting a traditional pizza, go to the store and buy a frozen vegan pizza and give it to them. Same thing here. Not a health food, but when, you realize, when they realize that it tastes different, they probably won't eat as much or request it as often. And with milk, simply replace it with an unsweetened almond milk. We'll be going into you know a few more of the substitutions later. But I know when I did that with my son, he was like, hmm, this tastes different. I don't like it. I was like, okay, well, that's milk. That's your milk. So all of these options are replacing the problematic items with items that don't get turned into opiates in the brain which is what triggers those intense cravings and out of control eating. So over time, what that does is it makes those, you know, the outbursts and everything else start to go down. And we'll be covering a bunch more of these substitutions. Okay. Yeah, big issue I had, anytime I put a plate down in front of my son and he didn't like the look of it or the smell of it, he just took it and threw it across the room. Hit the wall and <laughs> the best way to handle it is handle it very calmly. And at first I didn't. And I hired coaches and I read books and everything else. And I figured out that the best way to deal with it is to grab his hand and say that it's inappropriate and calmly get him out and walk him over and have him clean up as best he could. Now, depending on the age, obviously it's not going to be completely spick and span or anything else, but it's showing that there's a consequence. If they throw the meal, they have to clean it up. Now, the key here, and this is the hardest thing in the world, is do not show emotion. I had to start meditating because I was like, Ugh. but then after a while, I was like, okay, just throw it. Our goal here is to make eating time a family bonding experience and not World War III where we're just losing our minds. The other thing is not making anything different. That's the key. Kids know that if they don't eat, you'll get nervous and break down and give them anything they want. Do you think they're going to eat anything that's not desirable? Absolutely not, because they know you're going to cave. Now, I know one parent, personally, that gets nervous because a kid won't eat all day and at night, they go, well, we got to order pizza. Got to order pizza because we know at least they're going to eat something. Now, like I said, I'm not a doctor, not giving any medical advice. That said, I think it's highly doubtful that a kid will starve themselves to death because you didn't give them Pop-Tarts and, and pizza. So if my son threw his plate and wouldn't eat what I gave him, for him, the meal was over. And then the fun part, I'd tell him that he was gonna have the same exact thing for the next meal, which was always an interesting conversation. Now, does this sound cruel to you guys? For some people it does, and I get it. But for me, this is the most caring thing that I can do for my son. I love him enough to get over my own discomfort and give him what he needs to thrive in his future. And like I said, you start to remove that poison from their bodies and they start to heal, the outbursts lessen and life becomes easier. All right, one of my favorite techniques is called the bacon technique. And this is just really simply an if then, okay? If you eat three more pieces of chicken, then you'll get your bacon, your apples, or whatever that desired food is. I literally just did this an hour ago. And it was finish up the meat on your plate and you'll get some of these blueberries. It was like, how many pieces do I need to eat? I was like, you need to eat these. And it was that if then you get, you get the desired uh, food. So I found that if I gave him a plate with 
meat, vegetable, and fruit, he would eat the fruit and then say, oh, I'm all full. But if I withheld the fruit or in the morning I withheld the bacon, whatever the preferred food is, then he would eat everything else in order to get to the preferred food. Now this works really well to try new tastes and textures. You have a bro broccoli on the plate, eh, you know, you ever, they take it in and then they pretend to throw up. How many, how many of you experienced that? And it's like, it, you're not throwing up, like, come on. But anyway, to get them to try new things, it takes a while. Like this is not, I mean, this could be, you know, you have to stand your ground, but this takes a while. But if you can say, hey, have a piece of broccoli, you know, a little piece of broccoli and then you'll get a, an apple slice, then okay, cool. Then they'll try it because they know what they're going to get. And then over time, you don't need to do that anymore, which is the cool part. All right, the next is called the grazing technique, which is just simply leaving the meal that was thrown out, something going on here, and just let them graze on it. So they threw the plate or didn't eat it, say, okay, cool, it'll be here. If you get hungry, you can come up and just you know take bites on it. What that does is it takes the pressure off and allows them to eat when they're ready. I didn't do that a lot, but I know a lot of people that have and it's worked really well. All right, so let's spend some time finding some healthy alternatives to common junk food that makes up the majority of our kids' diets. Uh, for me personally, um, I don't like to use substitution for many items that I'm gonna go through here just for a few reasons. One is that I don't always have a substitution handy and I don't wanna be a slave to it if I'm out and about at a restaurant or traveling or a different environment, things like there's over someone's house. So if he's not used to eating bread, then it's a non-issue if we go to a place um, that doesn't have a gluten-free bun or something like that. And, and the other reason is because most gluten-free options, um, they're just not good for you anyway. Okay, so that said, let's jump into the bread. So there's a number of different options that you can do. I use my two-hour pancakes recipe as a substitute for bread and sandwiches. So I will take two pancakes, make turkey sandwiches, I'll use it as a hot dog bun, and it's cool because it's very sweet. So you have, I don't know if you guys have ever had a McGriddle, but you know, it's like savory and sweet. It's the same type of thing, so you could use that. Um, there's also, and I'm like, I totally wish I had stock in this company, but the image is there. There's a company called No Foods, and they make bread, buns, wraps, waffles, cereals, donuts, cookies, all the things like that. They even make pasta. I mean, it's just crazy what they do, and they taste really good. So what you can do is use that as, you know, as a replacement, and they're, you know, all the good things. No flour, no dairy, no soy, all, you know, all that good stuff. Um, in terms of dairy, I used unsweetened almond milk until it just got to a point where, you know, stopped drinking milk and switched over to water full time. There's a bunch of different uh, milk replacement products. We're going to get into that in the dairy section next week. All I could just say is stay away from soy and stay away from things that have a lot of sugar added to it. If you just go and get an almond milk and it says original on it, it's just got a ton of added sugar. So what you want to do is get organic. The, the one pictured here, Simply Nature, that's from LD, and that's, you know, it's not too bad. Coconut milk, also a good choice. All right, so let's jump into meats. So conventionally raised meats, which is any meat that's not either grass-fed or organic, is awful. Now there is a documentary out now, I forget what it's called, but it's all about how meat is the devil. Meat is not the devil. Bad meat is not good. So what we wanna do is add in high quality meats. So for every conventionally raised meat, there is a much better alternative that is very close to within reach. You don't have to go and uh, you know, raise your own cows and slaughter them anymore. Because this stuff, you know, there's been this trend, this swell in people that are mindfully eating. So now we have it, almost every grocery store, even the discount ones, have some pretty good stuff. So for hot dogs, you see on the left, this is from Trader Joe's. I think they also have them, um, I just read at Costco now. They have them all over. They're grass-fed, organic, uncured beef hot dogs no nitrates, and they're literally just beef and some spices. And that's what you're looking for in terms of ingredient profile. Ground beef, this is from Trader Joe's. 
grass-fed, I mean, they have it everywhere. Publix, Wegmans, Sprouts, Aldi, they have uh, grass-fed organic ground beef, and it's not that much more expensive, maybe a buck or two more a pound, um, which is nothing when you think about the health consequences of it. Okay, the other cool thing, especially since school started, is lunch meat. Lunch meat's terrible for you, right? It's just full of all sorts of nonsense. I found one, this was the first one I found, and I just found it within the past few months that I was like, oh my God, this is actually good. I don't know if you could see it. It's called Plainville Farms Organic Turkey Breast. And there's literally two ingredients, organic turkey and salt. I'm like, perfect. A lot of times what they do is they add in this ingredient and you always want to look for this ingredient. It's called carrageenan. I don't even know if I'm saying it right, but it causes inflammation. And when they're doing studies in rats and they want to make the rats have inflammation, they'll just inject this into them. So obviously not something you want to be giving your kids every day for school lunch. But this was like a great, great way. Um, organic chicken wings from Trader Joe's, that's a huge staple of ours. They also have pre-cooked chicken breasts, which when you're you know, not the most culinary experienced, having a pre-cooked decent chicken breast that I can just cut up and go is a huge win, especially for the school lunches. All right, so pasta and mac and cheese. This is pretty easy. I just stay away from it. But if you're going to do it, choose organic and gluten-free. All right. Up next, everybody's favorite, cake and pizza. So there's birthday parties throughout the year, and that's where the cake and the cupcakes are the centerpiece of of the party, right? And in these instances, I use a number of strategies. One, I'll go to a bakery. There's a few around the house and either get a gluten-free or vegan cupcake. Now, yes, it's full of sugar and the gluten-free ones still have dairy, but it's a much better choice than the low quality crap that's typically served at kids' birthdays. When you're having a kid's birthday and you're picking out the cupcakes, it's like, what is the cheapest one that you can get? Because the kids don't care, right? So. Anything that we could do that's a step up is better. The other thing you can do is you can make your own. Just Google paleo cupcake recipes and you'll find a ton of really good ones. I know uh, once, well, I didn't actually make it. I was in the, the kitchen when it was being made. So I guess that kind of counts. We made a, a paleo frosting for some cupcakes and it was really, really good. Okay, the other option is I talked to you about that company, No Foods and they have donuts and cookies. And what I've done, and I've just, I do it all the time, is I'll just bring a donut or a couple of the cookies, and when it's time for cake, he knows, I'll just give him that, that way he's eating a sweet, he doesn't feel left out, and everything else. A Little bit more thought goes into it, but like I said, I think it's worth it. Now, there are times when I am, I mean, let's be honest, it's almost every time I'm running to a birthday party, and running out the door. I don't have a gift yet. I've got to run to Target, but, and I just forget altogether. Situations like that, what I do is I'll just let him, if there's cupcakes, I'll just let him have the frosting. Like I said, not the greatest, but he still gets to taste something sweet, and it's all good. All right, next up is pizza. For pizza, same thing. I'll do a number of different options. I'll make my own, which is a really fun thing to do if you haven't done it with your kids. I know that at certain points, like I would never imagine that I could ever actually make anything in the kitchen uh, with him back in the day. Now it's a little bit easier, but I take one of those no food wraps that I was talking about, um, buy some organic marinara and just anytime you're buying sauce, one thing you really have to look at is the sugar content because in sauces, they just dump sugar into those things. So find one that's organic. Organic tomatoes are very, very important. And then make sure it's low in sugar. So we'll make our own. We either use those and do little mini ones or we'll get some gluten-free pizza crust. I have that pictured here. Store bar or, you know, we'll go to a restaurant and get a gluten-free pizza. Like I said, not the best by any means, but None of us are perfect and that's cool. In terms of cheese, if I can, I'll get organic raw cheese. 
which you need to go to like a Whole Foods or something like that. If they don't have raw, then I'll just get organic and just go light on it. And with all these options, I recommend getting the digestive enzymes because as I talked about, you know, these type of foods can seep through into the bloodstream and go to the brain. The digestive enzymes like are in there and they're, they're trying to break these things up and they're helping our kids' bodies break it up. So it'll have less of an impact. All right, let's get right into drinks, soda, Gatorade, juice, things like that. With this category, the only safe alternative is water and sparkling water. We'll be going into like some of the toxins later this week, but it blows my mind. There's an ingredient in Gatorade right now that's used as a flame retardant in tires and is banned around the world, yet it's still legal in the United States. Soda, like any type of soda, is diet soda, regular soda, highly toxic to neurotypical kids, let alone our sensitive kids, like forget it. Or juice, even organic juice, is full of sugar. It's just not worth it. When a kid gets used to drinking water and that's what they know, then that's what they ask for. My son doesn't ask me for anything except for water now. So, Daddy, I'm thirsty, can I have some water? Yeah, bring water bottles around. So my advice, stay away from all of it. They need water, they need to be hydrated, their cells and brains need to be hydrated, and we need to provide that for them. All right, next thing is cereal. We stay away from cereal altogether at my household. Like when I was growing up, I'd eat an entire box in one day. Not, not good. Um, I know if you are big cereal people and that's gonna be a tough one, same thing, that no foods company has an alternative that may be worth trying if you absolutely need to. But best bet for breakfast, like I said, give them what they need in terms of healthy fats and protein, help build up their brain and give them sustained energy. All right, what about snacks? I know most people give goldfish and crackers and things like that as snacks. And then you, you start to eat a little bit differently. The gluten-free pretzels and crackers, like I said, these are junk food and be, should be avoided as much as possible. And for snacks, I've used um, a lot of what's pictured here, walk through them with great success. This isn't everything, but this gives you an idea of there is a ton of stuff out right now that you guys can use as healthier alternatives for snacks. And the coolest thing is though, once you heal the gut and you're eating meals that have fat in them, snacking is not really that big of a deal, unless you're pushing them like really, really long. I mean, I see kids that eat every couple hours. It's, it's not the case when you get your body in check. All right, first one, almonds, pretty self-explanatory. Organic fruit, apples, slice them up, things like that. Pancakes, that's my two-hour pancake recipe. I use these as snacks because in the morning I'm making eggs, I'll make up a thing of pancakes and carry them with me. And if I'm going to a water park or somewhere out and about, we just sit down and we could eat them with our hands. So really easy and a great snack that I use all the time. Put almond butter on it, delicious. Okay, so corn in general is not the greatest. Our body has a hard time digesting it, the majority of it. Any type of corn you get, 90 plus percent of it is genetically modified and has pesticides all over it. That said, popcorn is a, is a decent snack if you get organic and it's made with olive oil. So we'll do that as a snack. Um, Grass-fed beef jerky, very important here. I was gonna, I actually had the ingredients up and I was gonna show you guys. A Slim Jim versus like a grass-fed organic beef jerky, I mean, it's disgusting. Like you would throw up in your mouth if you saw the ingredient list, if you actually read it. But just know that you can go on Amazon or Thrive or any of those other places online and just buy a grass-fed beef jerky. We did that for a while. And I just tell him, I'm like, hey, buddy, you want a bacon snack? And he's like, yep. So those are really good. Epic bars, which are the ones that are pictured, the nine bars, they have all different things, chicken, turkey, beef, bison, lamb. What you have to do is experiment, find out which one uh, your child likes. There's one, I don't have it pictured here, but there's a band, uh, brand called Bulletproof. They have collagen protein bars that are full of healthy fats and excellent protein. Um, I had one myself today. I think they're delicious. And we have RX bars. The key here, guys, is 
the little littlest amount of ingredients. On here, you can see it says egg whites, almonds, cashews, dates, no BS. It has the ingredients on the profile. I think that's really important. And if we're going to a party or something like that, I will bring organic corn chips. Like I said, corn's not the best, but it's better than if they're going around like pulling out Ritz crackers and things like that, where they're just gonna have this massive reaction. If you get an organic, uh, like tortilla chip, organic oil, it's not too bad. So for snacks or anything like that, simpler the better. All right, so how do we shop? How do we go and look for this stuff? I'll tell you one thing, modern food packages, packaging is an advertising masterpiece. They're designed to do two things. One, they deceive you with the healthy promise on the front, and then they distract you from the unhealthy truths that are hidden on the back of the package or you know what, what's in the ingredient list. So when we're out shopping, I want to enable you guys to be able to make informed decisions. Way to do that is you have to learn how to understand labels. Now there's really three parts to a label that you need to understand. First part is the front. We call that the billboard. That's what's on the shelf that catches your eye. The next is the nutrition facts. That's how many calories, how much fat, how much protein. And then where the rubber meets the road, the ingredient list. Most people only look at the front of the package in order before they make a purchase decision. But in order to really make an informed decision, you're gonna to have to look at all three. So what I wanna do is I wanna walk through a quick example with you. Potato chips. Which one do you think is healthier? Go ahead, type it in the chat bar. Let me, let me hear you guys. Which one is healthier? Answer is, I don't know. Let's dive in. I just told you that there's three things we need to look at. Why don't we look at all three together and make a determination? All right, first thing was the packaging, the billboard. So when I look at these, I see on the classic Lay's, it's like a bright colors, uh, it's very vibrant. The Lay's brand is, is huge, looks good. When I look at the, the baked, um, the logo is smaller, it's the muted colors, it looks more natural, it gives me that, you know, I'm out in the, the woods type of feeling. And what is the one thing that they're trying to really yell at you with an exclamation point? Baked, these are baked, these are healthy. Now, here's what you, I don't know if you can see this, but look really, really close. And if you can't see it on here, next time you go to the grocery store, I want you to actually look at this. In the very lower left-hand corner of the bag, look what it says. On the classic glaze, it says potato chips, which is what you'd expect. But on the baked, it says potato crisps. Huh. It just gives us a clue that these actually may not be potato chips because if they were, they would say it. But based on looking at the front, I would say the baked look to me like they're probably better. I get a better feeling from them when I do that. All right, so let's take a look at the label. And on underneath the word classic, that's the classic nutrient facts and under baked it's baked. So just take a look at calories, the calories from classic, to bake, to go from 160 down to 120. Cool, so we've got a 40 calorie drop. Awesome, so we're gonna give the check mark next to the baked. Fat goes from 10 to two. Also, check mark baked. Sodium, 170 to 135. That's three in a row for the baked. Then we get to carbohydrates. Now carbohydrates, which is just odd, why would carbohydrates of the same type of potato chip jump from 15 to 23 if it's just baked? So that one goes back to the classic. <clears throat> and sugar, although it's still low, it more than doubled. So we're gonna give that back to the classic. So after looking at this though, front of the bag I said baked, and looking at the back, the nutrition facts, I would probably say baked are still still better just because you know you got that calorie and fat drop and sodium. All right, so let's take a look at the ingredients. Boom. All right, the classic chips only have three ingredients. So it's potatoes, oil, and salt. 
Now, granted, they're not organic potatoes and organic oil and unrefined salt. But that said, there's no carcinogens, there's no toxic additives, and there's no unpronounceable, unpronounceable names. I can pronounce everything that's on there. The baked crisps are more like a Franken chip, and they're not what you think. Because when I think of a baked potato chip, what I think is it's the same potato, and then they just bake it, maybe use less oil. That's not the case at all. Okay, so the ingredients are dried potatoes, cornstarch, sugar, corn oil, salt, soy lechin, corn sugar, AKA high fructose corn syrup. Now, I didn't know that these were corn chips. I didn't know these were soy chips. I didn't know any of that. I didn't even know that they were gonna be putting high fructose corn syrup into these baked glaze. So after taking a look at the ingredient list, to me, it's pretty obvious that the baked version isn't healthier after all. and has ingredients that are, one, linked to cancer, two, linked to diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, infertility, compromised immunity, accelerated aging, and numerous other health issues. And I think you could see like why we wouldn't want to be putting that into our kids' bodies that have that are extremely sensitive. And you know, I hope this was a really good illustration for you guys of why looking at the packaging, the label, and the ingredient list is important for make, making good purchasing decisions for our children. Next week, we are going to be going through the grocery store, each aisle, and going through what we need to look out for and things that you know we should be looking. To, to get. Um, I want to do it this week. We just, there's just, it would be another hour and a half. So we're going to be doing that next week. The other thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at hidden toxins in our food and in our environment, things that zap our kids' energy, disrupt their hormones, inhibit their brain function, cause inflammation, things that you would not think of that are in our water, toothpaste, um, shampoo, lotions, things like that even in our furniture, it's crazy. But we're gonna have strategies and replacements for all of those things. You have to know what you're looking for in order to get rid of it. And what I want you guys to do for your homework, start implementing. Who has started implementing already? Who has made some changes? First thing I want you guys to do is get into the members area tomorrow. Uh, look out on your email, we'll be sending it out. Check your spam filters. It'll be coming from marty at loving-autism.org. Log in there. We'll have the recording up by the afternoon and everything else and all the links to these products and everything else. Get in there. If you haven't ordered your supplements yet, I want you to do it, okay? And I want you to start making changes with the food. That's your homework for next week because if you're going to start to see changes by the end of this, which is what I want, we need to start working on it now. I'm looking for success stories. Awesome. Making changes and feeling great about it. I love to hear that. And just remember, guys, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. This is not a diet. This is a lifestyle change that will have profound impact on your child and you and Results may take a little time, guys, but this is this is the best one of the best things you could ever do.